Polls open Israelis are voting for the fifth time in four years. Every election has unmasked how complex politics has become in Israel. The people's views are highly polarized. Parties don't see eye to eye and prominent leaders face corruption charges. So how will this time be different? Our correspondent Judy Cohen decodes the key players for you and whether Netanyahu could pull off a comeback. The last election was significant as it produced the first government in 12 years not headed by Benjamin Netanyahu. However, after only one year, Israel's most diverse coalition in the country's history lost its majority, with Prime Minister Bennett stepping aside to interim PM Lapid. Netanyahu's party is expected again to win the most seats, but numerous polls suggest continued deadlock, with neither side able to form a 61-seat majority. Okay. The deciding factor could be some of the smaller parties, including perhaps those on the extremes of both sides of the political spectrum. On the right, that would include the Religious Zionist Party, or RZP, whose policies include expelling Arab Israelis who express support for terrorists and the death penalty for terrorists themselves. On the left, that could include a party called Hadash Tal, whose representatives most recently referred to five slain members of the Lion's Den terror group as martyrs. There are numerous smaller parties that are struggling to cross the electoral threshold. These include, for example, Jewish Home on the right and Meretz on the left. But if they do manage to take some seats, they're expected to do so at the expense of the bigger parties on the right and left respectively, so that wouldn't necessarily sway the result. While repeated polls predict former Prime Minister Netanyahu as being able to pull together a coalition of 60 and interim PM Lapid 56, with possible support from Hadash Tal making it also 60, the current Defence Minister Benny Gantz could end up as the kingmaker or even as Prime Minister himself. His centre-right party is expected to attract many former Likud voters who aren't comfortable with the inclusion of the religious Zionist party and also centrist supporters for whom security is a top priority. And Jody Cohen, who's closely following those elections, now joins us live from Ranana. Great to have you back, Jody. The big question on everyone's mind, will there be a clear winner this time around? Because for years now, Israel has not seen political stability. Hi, good morning, Neha. So yes, that is the key question on everybody's mind. The polling stations opened here. I'm outside one of them, as you can see. Opened here just a short while ago, and they're just starting to set up with their booths trying to speak to voters to get them, get the undecided voters at the last minute to try possibly to change their minds. Um, I've been speaking to some of the people here. The, there aren't so many people here because it's a national holiday today. Most people are off work and are having a lion. They'll be trickling in, I'm sure, throughout the morning and a lot more throughout the day. But I've been speaking to some people that the mood is that you know, this is the fifth election in under four years. People are tired of voting. And people aren't too optimistic of there being a conclusive outcome either in this election. The polls um, suggest continued deadlock with uh, Netanyahu's Likud being able to form a coalition of 60 seats, which is not a majority they need. 61 is the magic number. And with Yair Lapid able to, um, predicted to get potentially to be able to form a coalition of 56, plus potentially four more seats from Hadash Tal on the far left there. There's always a coalition. There's never a clear winner from an election. We'll, more, we'll know more, and the exit polls will come at about 10 o'clock tonight. We'll know more by tomorrow about the actual results of the election. But of course, that isn't the final result. That's where the negotiations begin for both sides to try to form a coalition. We know that um, Benny Gantz should be, uh, is expected to play um, a central role in this election. He could be the kingmaker. He could even be prime minister himself. And I see two possible conditions under which that might happen. Number one is that 
he would want to be prime minister probably first in any rotation agreement. And number two is he would want to be able to say to, say to the electorate whether he's um, sitting with Netanyahu with a coalition on the right, that he's managed to weaken the influence of the religious Zionist party, for example, or if he's sitting with the coalition with Lapid, that he would want to say that he would ensure that Hadash Tal would only be supporting the government from the outside and not from within the government. So I see that those being the two key conditions, but we will know more probably tomorrow. Interesting. Uh, you seem to think we could see protracted negotiations lasting several days or perhaps weeks. But Jody, how important is the voter turnout likely to be for this election? You were mentioning earlier how weather could get in the way. Absolutely. So um, yesterday they were saying that there could actually be thunderstorms in parts of Israel. Today, that's been downplayed somewhat. It might just be raining in some parts of the country at some times during the day. But as I said, this is a national holiday. So very often people will go away for a trip with their family for the day. That might mean that when they come back, they're too tired to vote, it's too late. Um, if there's expected to be rain, they might not go away for the whole day, which might actually increase voter turnout. On the other hand, if, there, if it's particularly rainy, then that might encourage them to stay indoors. But the other thing that will encourage voter turnout, I think, is really their strategy. You know, Likud's strategy has been all along, one plus one equals four. That's been their continuous message throughout this campaign. If one Likud voter brings another Likud supporter who stayed at, ho at home last time, they're saying that they can get four solid years in power. And that's their key strategy. Also, we've seen in recent days Netanyahu encouraging the ultra-Orthodox to go out to vote. They make up 11% of the electorate and their voter turnout is expected actually to drop by up to 12% in this election. And the ultra-Orthodox tend to support the religious or right-wing parties. So that's why he's been um, focusing on them in this campaign. And also on Yesha Tid's side, their strategy has been to encourage the Arab Israelis to go out to vote to try and boost their voter turnout, which typically is around 44%. They make up 17% of the electorate. And the national voting turnout is usually around 67%. So that could really impact the outcome of the election. But it remains to be seen if they actually come out to vote. All right. Well, this does promise to be a fascinating election, Judy. Whether it throws up a clear winner, that's a different matter altogether. Thanks so much for getting us all those details. We'll keep coming back to you for the very latest through the day. Thank you.